For many of you, CPAP mask leaks are really, really annoying. Not only do they reduce the effectiveness of CPAP therapy, but they can really disturb our sleep and that of our partners. So what are some things we can do to really improve the quality of our CPAP mask seal? Well, stick around and I'll give you my top tips and advice. Hey guys, my name's Nick and welcome to my channel CPAP Reviews. For those of you already subscribed, thanks for your support, I really appreciate it. And for those of you tuning in for the first time, this is my education channel on snoring and sleep apnea and the products we use to treat the condition. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more, please consider subscribing to the channel and joining our growing community. CPAP therapy to me is all about balance. It's about balancing the therapy, those pressure levels, with comfort, how you sleep with the therapy. And it's about finding that happy medium where your apnea is really well managed, but at the same time, you can sleep comfortably with the therapy. There's absolutely no point in my eyes having all of your apnea really well controlled, yet at the same time, that very therapy is disturbing your sleep, waking you up out of sleep, and you're just not enjoying going to sleep with the therapy. All right, it just doesn't make sense. Now, having a really good mask seal is a very integral part of finding that balance, that happy medium. And today, I'm gonna to be discussing with you some great ways in which you can really improve your mask seal and your therapy. So firstly, I think it's really important that you understand how CPAP actually works and why the mask seal is so important. So positive airway pressure works when the pressure on the outside of our body is higher than the pressure in our lungs. And it's this pressure differential that actually forces air down into our lungs and keeps our breathing nice and stable during the night, giving us a great sleep. So the mask seal itself is really important because without the mask sealing well, it's very difficult to create the pressure required for this to happen, required for the therapy. So if we have a mask that's sealing really well, we're getting optimal pressure and we're getting optimal therapy. Whereas if we've got a leaky mask, a lot of that pressure is escaping. And so there's gonna be less pressure where we need it. And this is gonna cause the, the therapy to be less effective, okay? But it's also gonna cause a lot of other things as I'm sure many of you are aware of. It's gonna cause a lot more noise. It's gonna cause a lot more discomfort and disturbance during the night with air leaks into your eyes and, and things and so forth. So it is really important that we get that mask seal as good as it can possibly be. So what are some ways in which we can improve our CPAP mask seal? Well, the number one enemy of a good mask seal is actually the pressure itself. And the higher the pressure goes, the harder it is for that mask to seal onto your face. The pressure just wants to push that mask off the face. It wants to escape through the seal. So it's really important that we get our pressure levels right and get our pressure levels as low as possible while still managing our sleep apnea. And I say managing because that's what it really is. It's about managing the, the therapy with the comfort side of things. So how do we do this? Well, you're gonna need to know two things to be able to do this. One is you have to have access to your pressure level settings. We call them the clinical settings. It's a bit of a hidden menu, but I want you to go and learn how to change the pressure settings on your machine. Google it, look at some of my videos, but learn how to do it yourself because it's really important and it really will give you greater control over your therapy and you'll thank me later. Secondly, you need to have access to your data on your machine and actually kind of know a little bit about what you're looking for in your data, sort of understand the data a little bit and I'm gonna teach you a little bit here. I'm gonna break this up a little bit because I know some of you are on fixed pressure CPAP machines and some of you on auto CPAP machines, APAP machines, and it's a little bit different about how we do it. So I'm gonna start with CPAP. So if you're on a CPAP machine, what I want you to do tonight is just drop your pressure by one level. If you're on 10, bring it down to nine. And then over the next couple of days, I want you to monitor your sleep data and you're gonna be looking at your apnea hypopnea index. It'll probably say AHI in your data settings. And we wanna see that number ideally under five, which means that it's, your apnea is well managed or around five is fine. Like if it's 5.56, it's not a big deal, okay? If it's going up eight, nine, 10, 
uh, your pressure's too low. You need to go up a little bit, all right? But we're going to be looking at that apnea hypopnea index. And if it's below five, in a couple of nights time, you're going to drop it again to eight. And you can keep dropping that number down as long as your apnea hypopnea index is below five. Really simple, huh? Now, if you're on an auto machine, it's a little bit different, but it's quite similar. We first wanna look at our data, and in particular, we wanna look at three things. Uh, the first one is going to be our 90th or 95th percentile pressure level. And it'll be different depending on what device you've got. It'll either be 90 or 95. The second is your average pressure. And then your third, your apnea hypopnea index again. And we're gonna use these values to guide us where to set our pressure limits, our auto max, which is our upper pressure limit, and our auto min, which is our lower pressure limit. And then the machine will obviously use its algorithm to determine where the pressure needs to be within those limits. But the goal here is to reduce machine's ability to really shoot up past that max limit and cause those mass leaks. So for that 10% of the night when it is above the 90th percentile pressure and causing those mass leaks, we're gonna sacrifice that control, that ultimate control, for the comfort, and that's the balancing act there. All right, so I'm gonna give you an example here because I find examples work quite well with you guys. And I've looked at my data and I've seen the 90th percentile is 10, and the average pressure is coming in at seven, and my apnea hypopnea index is four. What I'm gonna do is straight away, I'm gonna go into my clinical settings and I'm gonna set my auto max at the 90th percentile at 10. Okay, I've capped it at 10, the machine can't go higher than 10. I'm gonna use my average pressure, which came in at seven, as just a guide where to put my lower limit. You can just leave your lower limit at the base at four, but I find that you're gonna get better results with your apnea hypopnea index if the lower limit is a little bit closer to your average. Just for fun, I'm gonna have a little ramp period just while I'm getting off to sleep, while I'm getting comfortable in my bed, watching a bit of YouTube. I'm gonna get comfortable and have the starting pressure at four with a little ramp period going up to six for 30 minutes, just while I get off to sleep. So those settings explained, machine starts at four. Gradually it builds up to six while I'm getting off to sleep. Once it hits six and that 30 minutes is finished, it's gonna go between six and 10, which is my cap, depending on what's required, depending on whether I'm, I'm snoring, depending on not whether I'm having sleep apnea and so forth, okay? So that's sort of how it works. But that's a great little example there of how you can set your machine up correctly so that it's working at its lowest level while still controlling your sleep apnea. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna monitor my therapy over the next few days, check out my apnea hypopnea index, and if it's still below five, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bring that cap from 10 down to 9.5 or nine. And I'm gonna keep monitoring my apnea hypopnea index. And I can keep bringing that level down as long as my apnea hypopnea index is well managed, okay? And that's sort of how you do it. But if you can do this, if you can really sort of fine tune your therapy levels, it's gonna go a long way to improving your mass seal. And ultimately, the comfort of your therapy and how well you sleep with your therapy and how quiet your machine is. You know, it's not gonna disturb your partner. It's not gonna wake you up with dry eyes, all this sort of stuff, okay? So get it right. Number two, cleaning and replacing your equipment, all right? So all the oils and sweat that are gonna build up in your silicon cushion and so forth, they reduce the mask's ability to seal, okay? It's much easier for the air to escape if your mask isn't clean. And obviously it's not gonna smell as good and so forth, okay? And be as hygienic for you. So just get into a habit get yourself a pack of mask wipes and just wipe down the mask of a morning. It'll take you three seconds. Or if you don't have mask wipes, just, you know, warm soapy water, just get the oil and the sweat off the cushion. Your gear will last longer. It'll smell better. It'll be much better for you, but you'll get a much better seal as well. And then obviously um, you need to replace your gear from time to time. I know you I know it's expensive. Ultimately, you're going to be much better off for it. Your mask is going to seal a whole lot better. Okay, so just don't have your mask cushion for two years and just expect it to seal well. You need to put a bit of money in. Uh, fitting it correctly and running a mask seal test. Just spend a bit of time making sure that your mask straps are nice and even, that they have the right amount of tension on them to hold that mask in place. Many of you will go to bed and fit your mask at the lowest pressure level. And then obviously 
when you fall asleep and that pressure level increases, yeah, sure, it was sealing well in the beginning, but as the pressure goes up, it might not seal as well. So most machines these days can run a mask seal test and the machine will run through a variety of pressures to make sure the mask is sealing well. So if you can run through that in the beginning, you know that when you fall asleep and the pressure gets a little bit higher, the mask is still gonna steal really well. And lastly, obviously you might have to change up the mask. Different masks are gonna suit different faces and so forth. And I've got a little list here of just sort of my masks from experience that I've found do seal really well. That they might not have all the features of you know different masks and things like that, but when it comes to the actual seal of the mask, uh, these are some top ones to have a look at if you are struggling. So I did a video, this is a full face mask to start with. I did a video not long ago on one of my favorites, uh, the ResMed Mirage Quattro, very old school now, but spot on seal. Uh, ResMed Quattro Air and the ResMed F10. The F20 is still good, but I don't find it seals quite as well as the older ones, the Quattro Air, the F10 and the Mirage Quattro. Uh, and from uh, Fisher and Paykel, the Simplis and Viterra is also a fantastic mask. Very similar seal, that Roll Fit and the Roll Fit XT seal on the Viterra and the Simplis. Excellent seals. Uh, nasal, standard nasal, you're gonna be wanting to go a Fisher and Paykel Eson or an Eson 2 or a ResMed N20 or Air Touch N20, both excellent sealing nasal masks, standard nasal masks. And then for the pillow mask, uh, you can't go past one of my all time favorites, which is the P10 mask. But what you might wanna do if you do have a P10 or you're looking at getting a P10 is getting a strap from the N30. You can buy the strap by itself and replacing it because the P10, doesn't have any adjustments, but the N30 strap, you can get that strap. It's got an adjustment on it. You can make it tighter and looser, which works an absolute treat. Um, and then you've got uh, the Dreamwear gel or the P30i, which are those top of the head hollow tube masks that have the pillow sections. If you're gonna use the top of the head that have sort of the nasal cushion parts, they're probably not gonna be quite as good in the ceiling aspect. Alrighty guys, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. And if you found it somewhat useful, I'd really love the thumbs up. And if you've got some tips or advice, make sure you put them in the comments section so that others can learn from your experiences. I hope you're all well, take care, and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.